Welcome back everyone, Alex Javaris here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to prepare your own supports for oil painting. The support or surface you paint on is really important because almost as much as the brushes you use, your surface will also affect the appearance or style of your work. So finding surfaces that you like is essential for developing your own personal style. There are a wide variety of surfaces you can use and in this video I will be showing you some of the surfaces artists most commonly use and explaining the differences between them. I'll also be sharing with you the surfaces I like to work on. Now here is a selection of ready-made supports that you will typically find in most art supply stores. Stretch canvases or panels made with cotton canvas primed with acrylic gesso. In my opinion, ready-made canvases like these are rubbish. They're overpriced and because they never use enough primer, they're usually too absorbent and therefore horrible to work on. This small still life was painted on museum board, primed with polyurethane varnish, which is much nicer to work on and a lot cheaper than most commercial ready-made canvases. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make these and also a few other surfaces which are really cheap, quick and easy to make. Then, in my next video, I'm going to show you how to prepare your own professional quality oiled primed linen canvases for around the same price as the cotton canvases you find in most art shops. Now, the first thing you will need to get if you want to save money on painting surfaces is some acrylic gesso. I normally work on oil primed linen as it's much less absorbent than gesso. But I still use gesso because it's the quickest way to recycle any older paintings that I don't want to keep. Apply just one coat with a brush and by the next day you'll have a new surface ready to work on. So I definitely recommend getting some gesso so you can reuse any older canvases you're not happy with. You can also greatly improve the quality of ready-made cotton canvases by applying an extra coat of gesso to them. Here I'm brushing some gesso onto a cheap canvas board I found for around £2.50. Boards like these are usually horrifically absorbent, almost as bad as painting straight onto unprimed paper. But the extra coat of gesso will make it much nicer to use. You can also apply gesso directly onto wooden panels. This is probably one of the cheapest and easiest ways of preparing your own surfaces. You can usually find gesso for around £20 a litre with better quality brands sometimes costing more. And depending on the wood you use, panels like these should only cost a few pounds each to make, even with several coats of gesso. And you don't only have to use wood. Here, I'm preparing some watercolour paper, ready for priming. I'm taping the sides of the paper to a board in order to stretch it. If I tried to prime the paper without stretching it, it would buckle as it dries, but by taping it down I will ensure that the paper dries flat. To do this I'm using gum tape, which I'm wetting down with a damp sponge and pressing down along each side of the piece of paper. And you need to make sure the paper you use is thick enough. I'm using some 400 GSM watercolour paper called Fabriano Pitura. I paid £9.30 for five 70 by 50 centimetre sheets, so that's less than £2 per sheet. And I can cut each sheet into even smaller pieces. Once all the sides have been taped down, the paper is ready for priming. 
However, in this instance, I'm not actually priming this paper with gesso. Instead, I'm using a size made with rabbit skin glue. This will provide a much less absorbent surface to work on than the acrylic gesso, which I prefer because it allows me to do more with the paint, moving it around and wiping it back. I'll show you what I mean later on in this video. Once I have applied one coat of rabbit skin glue, I will leave it to dry for a couple of hours or usually overnight, then apply a second coat. Then, once that's dry, you have a nice, non-absorbent surface that's ready to work on. Rabbit skin glue is also really cheap. One kilo of granules costs around £20 and will literally last you years. Though preparing rabbit skin glue is quite involved and I'm going to show you exactly how to do so in my next video on stretching linen canvases. But if repairing rabbit skin glue is too much of a hassle, or you're a vegan, there are other products you can use which also provide a really nice non-absorbent surface. This is water-based polyurethane varnish, which you can find in any hardware store, and it's one of the quickest and easiest things to use. I'm using it to prime a piece of four-ply museum board which is the archival quality board picture framers use for mounting. I paid £5.60 for a sheet that I was able to cut down into four of these 8 by 10 inch panels. And I paid £12.99 for a litre of varnish, which will supposedly cover four square metres with several coats. So each panel is costing me less than £2. Here, I'm applying the varnish with a brush, but you can also use a sponge or a roller. And as you can see, the varnish goes on clear. The first coat usually uses a bit more varnish as it gets absorbed into the paper. But then after that, the next coat goes on much easier. You need two or three coats on the side you're going to be working on and an additional coat on the back to prevent the card from bending. But the best thing about polyurethane varnish is that it only takes an hour to dry between coats, so you have a surface that's ready to use that only takes a few hours to prepare. But there is another cheap non-absorbent surface you can use that needs no preparation at all. This is vellum, made of cotton which is basically the same thing as tracing paper, only thicker. The A3 sheet I've got taped to this board cost me all of £1.20. And as you can see, I'm able to paint directly onto it. Here, I'm placing a ground. Because this is paper, I'm unable to use any solvent the way I normally would when toning a canvas. But I don't need any. Because the surface is so smooth, I'm able to spread the paint over it just by wiping it back with some paper towel. Next, I'm going to start mapping out my subject. A plaster bust copied from the famous Greek sculpture of Laocon, which is on display in the Vatican. Here you can see I'm correcting the drawing. Simply by wiping away the marks I've made, with some paper towel. This is one of the main reasons I like using smoother, less absorbent surfaces to work on, because it allows you to wipe away the paint and correct your mistakes so easily. On a more absorbent surface, I would need to use solvent. And on really absorbent surfaces, like some ready-made canvases or other kinds of paper that are supposedly suitable for oil painting, it's impossible to wipe back, even with solvent. With the main shadow shapes mapped out, I'm next going to start massing in the darks with a transparent layer of raw umber. I want you to notice how my brush marks remain visible, giving the darks a much more interesting texture. On a more absorbent surface, 
this wouldn't happen. The paint would be absorbed and this transparent layer would appear much duller and flatter. Here, once more, I'm drawing by wiping away the paint with some paper towel. Finding some of the small light shapes around Laocon's mouth and beard. Notice how I can wipe right back to the vellum. Next, I'm going to start massing in the lights. And once again, I want you to notice how fluid my brush strokes appear. So basically, when you work on a smoother surface, because less of the paint is absorbed, more of the brush strokes remain visible. So it gives your work a more painterly appearance. It also means you can move the paint around more. This is like adding medium to the paint to increase its flow, but instead the flow comes from the surface itself. However, the fact that the paint moves more does make it a little harder to control. If you've been working on more absorbent surfaces up until now, when you first use a smoother surface, you may find it much slicker than you're used to. You will find the paint lifts off more easily if you fiddle around too much and keep going over the same areas. But once you get used to it, you will find that because the paint moves more, you can actually do more with it, producing a wider variety of effects. I'll use the analogy of a powerful sports car. It may be harder to control, but it will perform much better. So why don't you give some of the surfaces I've shown you in this video a go and see what you think for yourselves. And while this is by no means the definitive list of all the surfaces you can use for oil painting, I've hopefully shown you a few ways you can save some money. In my next video, I'll be showing you how I prepare my favourite non-absorbent surface, oil primed linen. So until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. Good luck with your painting and thank you for watching.